Turn your Bible this morning to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. We'll begin reading in verse 24, and we're going to finish up our study on the Sermon on the Mount. It's not been weeks, it's been several months we've been looking at this sermon that Christ preached and the many teachings that are in it. And I think this is a in conclusion with it and looking at it. Hopefully this morning we can realize and appreciate and understand the context of what he was saying. What he wanted us to get from this. What he wanted us to discern from this. How he wanted us to apply this to our hearts and lives. Okay. Now, he uses as an example, and we're going to read the scripture here in just a moment, about building a house. Now, we're all kind of familiar with building a house. But the one thing we all know about building a house is this. In order for the house to stand and to be stable, it has to have a good foundation, doesn't it? I don't care what other kind of material you put into a house, if the foundation isn't solid, then what's going to eventually happen to the house? It's going to fall. It's going to crumble, isn't it? So we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But first I want to get us to look back and think about all that we've studied and talked about in this sermon. He never preached this sermon to give us something to live by and to do in order to obtain salvation. Because you can't live up to nor live by the standards that he laid down in the Sermon on the Mount. You can't do it. The bar is far too high for you to even think about attempting to jump over, so to speak can't do it. Because you see the Sermon on the Mount he revealed to us perfection. Perfection. Well, I'm not perfect and you're not perfect. So you're not going to be able to meet that standard. Hit that mark, so to speak. You're incapable of it because you're sinful. You're sinful. You can't do something you're unable to do. God knows that. Jesus knew that. But yet, He laid down for us the standard in order to get us to what? To come to the conclusion. Hopefully that everyone has that have been listening to me come to this conclusion. I can't live up to that. Well, that's exactly what God wants you to admit. You can't live up to it. I can't live up to it. There's no one can live up to it. The only one who lived up to it was the man who spoke the words, and that was Jesus Christ, because he was the sinless, holy, perfect Son of God, something we're not. We're sinful. We're flawed. We're imperfect. We can't meet the standard he laid down there. Can't do it. It's an impossibility. But that's exactly what God wants you to understand and what he wants you to realize. What's stated and taught throughout the entire Bible all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark. We're all imperfect. We're all sinners that are separated from God because of our sin. And the payday for that sin, the Bible teaches us, is what? Death. Death. We're separated. We're going to die physically. But my friend, spiritual death is the horrible death. Because here's the thing about it. I don't care who the individual is. When they die, they don't cease to exist. Death isn't extinction. Death is just merely separation. The body from the soul. Spirit. That's what takes place in death. This body's going back to the dust of the earth. But who I am... He's going to live on. I'll either live in hell or I'll live in heaven. That's my choice. I make that decision here in this life where I spend my eternity at. But I'm never going to cease to exist. That's what death is. It's separation. And we're all going to be separated from this body. It's going back to the dust of the earth. But you don't want to be separated from God throughout all eternity. That's spiritual death. But that's the payday for sin. That's the payday for sin. 
That's how God punishes sin. Your death can't pay for your sins. Only one death could pay for sins because he was perfect. You and I aren't perfect. I could die for you and it wouldn't help you one bit. Even though I willingly wanted to do it, it wouldn't help you one bit. It wouldn't accomplish a thing because I'm sinful. Jesus was sinless and he willingly came and died for all sin for everybody. So you see, only one death could pay sin's debt. And that was the death of Jesus. And even though the wage of sin is death, the gift, the gift. Now let me let me say this. Gifts do cost. You may get them for free, but they cost. Somebody paid for it. Somebody bought it. And God wants to give you salvation. It's a free to you because you can't earn it and you don't deserve it and you certainly can't pay for it. But God wants to give it to you. But it's been paid for through Christ's death on Calvary's cross. You see, those that know Jesus, we aren't redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold. We're redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. So you see, Christ came and paid your sin debt. And if you'll accept it, God will give you eternal life. How simple can it get, my friend? God's plan of salvation is so simple, isn't it? But it's a perfect plan of salvation. A perfect plan. We'll talk more about that when we read our scripture. But see, understand and realize no one can work their way, earn their way into heaven through their own effort. And if that's the foundation you're basing your future on, my friend, it's going to crumble and it's going to collapse. I don't care what you put on it, how you build upon it. That's what we want to talk about first. Let's get the proper foundation. Then we'll talk about using the sands of Christ to build upon that foundation. But you've got to get the right foundation first. Let's read our scripture and we'll continue on. It says in verse 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, and, and, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Solid foundation. You know, Jesus is referred to in the scripture as being the cornerstone of the church. The building block, the initial thing is the most stable. You know, you want, some, you want the most stable thing you can find if you want to build a house, don't you? Well, if you're talking about where you're going to spend your eternity at, what do you want the most stable thing there is? You want one, you, you know, and that's what we're going to talk about here. But it says, the wise individual hears what I say and does what I say. It says, and everyone that heareth those sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now, the foundation, foundation, can't be your righteousness can't be something you produce through your own effort, through your own works. No matter how hard you may think you're trying to follow God's teachings and do the things that God's words uh, tells us to do, you're unable to do them. You're unable to do them. You can't. It's an impossibility. You can't meet a perfect standard when you're imperfect yourself. You just can't do it. And that's what God wants us to understand and to realize and to acknowledge. Look, God, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. God says, I know you can. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. You can. But there's someone who can and did and will do it for you. So you see, I'm not going to build my, found, my house on a foundation based upon my works and who I am. Jack Swallow is flawed. He's imperfect. He sins every single day that he lives. I don't want my house built upon a foundation like that, do you? No, I don't. I don't want it based upon who I am. I don't want my salvation to depend upon who I am and how good I can be and what I can refrain, what I can refrain from doing. I, I don't want my... What's, and that's not going to save me. If that's what I'm basing my hopes on, then I'm lost. I'm going to die and I'm going to go to hell. But you see, I'm not building my hopes upon 
a foundation that I produced in my own effort, my friend. <coughs> Send that back to the store. I don't want that. That's not suitable material for me. I want the righteousness that Jesus provides through his death on Calvary's cross. I want God's righteousness, not my own. Send, I, I, I want to build my house upon what Jesus did, not what I did. I want to build my house upon what Jesus did on Calvary's cross because it was perfect. It was complete. When he said it's finished, he paid in full for every sin that's ever been committed. So my friend, my that's my foundation. I want mine. I want the one that God provides through Jesus. That's what I'm building my hopes on, my future on, my life on, on Jesus. Then when adversity comes, when difficulties come, in life and they do, my friend, my foundation remains sure. It's solid. It's based upon not me, but on Jesus. On Jesus. And then finally one day, my friend, and some of you were there last night, when it comes that time, and it's coming to all, it's born the man wants to die and then the judgment. Just like that song we've been singing here for several Sundays now, Austin's Amen. When I face the chilling hand of death, my friend, where could I go but to the Lord? And it's coming to me one day, and it's coming to you one day. When that time comes, my friend, I'm secure and I'm safe in the foundation that I have chosen to build my house upon. My hope, so to speak, my future, my life is not built upon me and myself or anybody else's. It's built upon Jesus. Isn't it amazing how many people build their lives upon themselves and what they can do, even adopt different philosophies as such? And we are, all of us have a little bit of philosophy in us. Do you know what I bring to that? I have some hillbilly philosophy that I use at times. I mean, you know, take it or leave it or whatever it may be. But everybody's got their own little sayings and their own little phrases about this and that and applying it. And that, you know, that that's all right. But I'm going to tell you something, my friend. My future's not built upon that. It's not built upon that. It's built upon Jesus. It's based upon Jesus and what he did. If you've got it built upon anything else, my friend, it's going to fall. It's not going to last. No matter what. It must have a solid foundation. And that solid foundation is Jesus. Jesus. Jimmy brought up a very important point in our Sunday school lesson this morning about Nicodemus being very religious. And he was. He was very religious. But he found no peace. He found no assurance. He found no hope in that. If he had, he wouldn't have come to Jesus by night and said, Lord, we know that you're a teacher sent from God. He's trying to engage Christ in conversation. And Christ knew exactly what he said. Nicodemus said, to be born again, you can't enter into the kingdom of God. Kingdom. He needed to be saved. But everybody needs to be saved. Everybody. We've all sinned. We've all sinned. Don't build your foundation upon anything except <coughs> Jesus Christ. Don't mix anything with it. You don't need anything else with it. Don't say my foundation is built upon Jesus plus. No, you don't need nothing but Jesus, my friend. That's all you that's all you better all you nothing else matters. My foundation, my 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 hope, my life, my future is built upon Jesus Christ. Yours better be too, my friend. You decide. You decide. I mean, you, 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 you can be influenced, and we are influenced by many different things. But here's the thing about it. At the end of the day, my friend, you can't blame your bad choices on influence because you had the choice to reject that as well. You didn't have to do it. I've had so many people say, well, you know, it was because of this, because of that. Well, it could influence you. I'm not saying that it didn't. But at the end of the day, my friend, Use this expression, you're the one that pulls the trigger. You decide what you want to do. Nobody tells you what to do. And when it goes wrong, then people want to blame it on 
someone else or something else. No, you didn't have to do that. Uh -huh. You could have made a better choice, a better decision. See, that's one thing about people. See, my people don't, but they don't want to accept responsibility when they make decisions. Because when it goes wrong, then they want to say, well, it's so-and-so's fault. It's this one's fault. It's that. No, it's your fault. It's your fault. When I sin, it's nobody's fault but my own. I, I, I didn't have to. I chose to. Knowing that it was wrong. Knowing that, and I can blame the devil. The devil can't make me sin. You remember Flip? Some of you don't remember Flip. Some, I know some of you kids don't remember Flip Wilson, a comedian back years ago. Some of you did. I see some of you smile. You remember Flip Wilson? You know, one of his favorite expressions was, well, the devil made me do it. Well, my friend, the devil can't make you do anything. He can tempt you, and he does, but he can't make you do it. You decide. It's your decision. It's your choice. And you must decide. What am I going to build my, what, what's my life going to be based upon? What's, what's the foundation of my life? The decisions that I make, the things that I do, what's it going to be? It's going to be based on something, doesn't it? I mean, it does. People have based it on a lot of different things. And that's your decision. That's your choice. But you need to understand, as you say right here, there's consequences. There's always consequences with every choice you make. Doesn't matter what it is. There's always a consequence. You need to understand that. You need to realize that. And what he's saying is this. If you pick the right foundation, you're fine. If you pick the wrong one, then you're sunk. Here's the thing about it, though. There's only one solid foundation, and that's Jesus. That's Jesus. So it begins with the foundation. It begins with the foundation. Your relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Then you build upon it. And what I mean by that is this. Look, once you get the foundation right, your hopes, your future, is built upon that foundation. It's secure, my friend. It ain't going nowhere. Let me tell you something, my friend. No matter what life may throw at me, no matter what happens to me in life, my foundation is solid. I'm secure. Nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, my Lord. He loves me when I'm unlovable. He loved me when I was unlovable. And sometimes I'm not very lovable. I'm not. My life can attest to that. She loves me anyway. I'm not very lovable at times, but God loves me. He loves me, period. No conditions. He just loves me. Man, think about that. And that, that'll never change. That's never going to change. Never going to change. So that's secure. My future's secure. My destiny's secure. Where I'm going is secure. I know that. But I've got a life to live here, too, as well. God's given me a life, given me a life. Praise Him for it each and every day. Be thankful for the life God's given you. It comes from Him, doesn't it? We can dwell on the difficulties that we all go through, we all go through them, but praise God for the privilege of being able to live each and every day. <coughs> and that life that you live, much of it is determined by the decisions you make the choices you make. When he speaks of doing these things of mine, if we would follow God's teachings to the best of our limited ability, of course you can't keep them. That's why you've got Jesus Christ in solid foundation as far as you know being able to live up to them. But think of this. Think of this. When you obey the word of God, you base your life upon what God's word teaches. You talk about of course, there's going to be still hardships and heartaches and adversity and difficulty, but my friend, there's nothing produces joy and peace and assurance in your life is to follow the teachings of God's Word, doing what God's Word says. The ways the transgressor is hard, my friend. Satan paints, he paints a pretty picture. He makes it look, oh yeah, he makes it look good, but then the consequences fall right there. And the results of it. If you want to be happy, if you want to be joyful, base your decisions upon the Word of God. When you decide to do something, whatever it is, 
ask yourself, you know, is this what God would want me to do? Just this decision I need to make that's going to you know, enhance my life, you know, make my life more joyful and such like that. Here's here's the here's the one here's what gets in the way though. Why I think people don't live an abundant life that Jesus promised. Here's, here's what gets in the way. You do. You get in your own way. Here's here's why. Because you're selfish. You're self-centered. And I've often said this. People be much, much better off once they realize. The world doesn't revolve around them. But some people never figure that out, do they? They think they're the only person on the planet. It doesn't, it doesn't matter about what anybody else wants as long as they get what they want. They never do, they never figure it out. And these people go through life so unhappy, so dissatisfied, so discouraged. Selfishness keeps you from really living the abundant life that Christ spoke of. You're not the only person here. You're not the only person with families. You're, you're not the only person that, that has to have gone. You're, you're not the center of the universe. The cross is the center of the universe, my friend. What happened to Calvary? You're not it. You may think you are sometimes, but you're not. And the sooner you realize that, better off you are. Better off you are. Make decisions based upon what God's Word teaches. Not what, not not what you want, but what does God want? Now here's, you know, and I, 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 I've adopted this from, from my study of God's word and personal experience. When I talk to people, especially someone that, that's young and get trying to figure out what am I going to do with my life, here's the advice I give them. You can take it for what it is. I said you can do three things. You can do what other people want you to do, and you end up you're not going to be very happy doing what other people want you to do. You can do what you want to do, which is what the world really emphasizes, isn't it? Be your own person. Go for your dreams. Shoot for this. Shoot for that. Well, you know, that might work out and it might not work out according to what your dreams are. Isn't it? You can do what other people want you to do. You can do what you want to do. Or you can hit a home run and do what God wants you to do. And then you'll be happy. Then you'll be happy. But how many people do that? How many people are miserable because they're trying to do what somebody else wants them to do or they're trying to do what they want to do? The happier people are the ones who are doing what God wants them to do. So, kids, that's some more of my hillbilly philosophy I'll pass on to you. If you want to be happy, do what God wants you to do. Don't, don't worry about what anybody else, not even yourself. You think you may know what's best for yourself sometimes, but you really don't. You really don't. God does. Trust God. Let Him lead you. Let Him guide you. Let Him influence your decisions. Many people make decisions. They don't even consult to God's Word. Do they? No. They go find somebody that tells them what they want to hear. Here's the, here's the good thing about the Bible, my friend. The Bible doesn't tell you what you want to hear. The Bible tells you what you need to hear. There's a big difference. I can find a lot of people tell me what I want to hear. But I can only find one that loves me enough to tell me what I need to hear. And that's God. That's God. Let God's Word influence you. Let it help to mold you and make you whatever decisions that you might make. Understand and realize, look, you know, what was Christ's life all about? Did Christ, when Christ came to the earth, was there any selfish motivation behind doing that? Was he going to gain a more important position or obtain more? Look, people, he was there in the beginning with the Father and the Spirit. He created all things that you see. He had he owns it all. It all belongs to God. Did he did he, did he attain to a higher position? No, he was already God's son. He was already worshipped by angels. He came unselfishly to meet your needs. He came to serve. He said, I didn't come to be served. I come to serve. 
Make your life about helping others and serving others. If you do, my friends, I believe once you got that foundation, which is the only foundation, Jesus, and you build upon these kinds of things, you'll have a joyful, fruitful, peaceful, productive life. I believe that. Doesn't matter what the world thinks. Or what the world says about you. You're doing what God wants you to do. You're doing the right thing. So, you decide. You get in the bill of the house. You make the decision. You draw up the house plan, how big you want it, how small you want it, you know, how many bathrooms you want, all this kind of stuff, and, you know, how you want it to look on there. Now, you choose, you decide what you build it out of. You build it out of. First starts with the foundation. That's faith in Jesus Christ as God's Son, the Savior and Lord, King of King and Lord of Lords. Once you get that, my friend, then you can start building, can't you? Then how are you going to build on to it? Selfishly? Self centeredly? you can let God's word direct you and lead you and guide you and build something that's going to influence it's going to help other people your choice your decision you decide but it begins with what that yeah, foundation if you don't know Jesus Christ your personal savior my friend nothing else really matters I'm having to talk about it eternally nothing else really matters if you don't have that, what do you got? It's the most important thing in life. Lord Jesus. Put your faith and trust in Him. Then things start to fall in place. But it begins by coming to Christ. Turning it over to Him. He said, Lord, here's my life. You gave it to me. Lord, I give it back. You know more, you know me more than I God, I I come to you, Lord, you direct me, you lead me, you guide me. Put your faith, put your trust in Jesus. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you this day, God, for blessing us and allowing us to be here this morning. Thank you for each one of you in attendance, God. I pray, Lord, that Jesus has been lifted up and exalted today as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, as Savior of all. God, if anyone hears this message today and doesn't know him as their personal Savior, God, I pray today would be the day they'd say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I acknowledge my sin, God. I want Jesus to come in my heart and life and save me and give me eternal life. God, I want to base my life upon that firm foundation, that solid foundation in Jesus. Thank you once again, God, for the privilege to preach. And Lord, move in our hearts now. In Jesus' name I pray. We stand there and we sing a song of invitation. Page 177. <laughs>
Good to see you this morning. God blessed us with a tremendous Bible school this past week. Praise God for that. Uh, really, really, really had a good time. Enjoyed that. And, and uh, uh, remember tonight is singing testimony service. So uh, we we'll begin six o'clock on that. And also today at two, uh, G uh, Kathy, we're going to have a brief uh, service right here in the church. You just you know read scripture prayer and sing a song. And we're going to go you know to the, to the grand honor like that. And he said, did anyone would like to stay? Be plenty of food over there if you want to stay with the family during that time. All right, so anything else before we go? Any other announcements? Anything else? You want to have a word of testimony? God's answer to prayer for you this week. Anything you'd like to share at this time before we dismiss? Anybody? You want? All right, then. All right, then. David Brooks dismisses, bro.